So after all the insanity of the last few episodes, I feel like we might get a relaxing or peaceful episode that's character focused. Okay. Especially since I think we're meeting the rest of the higher ranking Demon Slayers. I'm still pissed they put him on this bed of gravel. That's all he's been through. No respect. <sighs> it's gonna be a hard sell, right? How do you sell all of them and not killing Nezuko? Just keep her in the box, maybe. Is this gonna end with Gyu beating the crap out of Tanjiro? To make a point? I'm glad we're getting so well introduced to these characters' chins. No, they are. Hashira, right, right. Colorful crew. If Butterfly Lady is any indication, they are terrifying and deadly. They're the Hashira. <laughs> Stay focused, Tanjiro. I know you've just slept on a bed of rocks for five minutes, but... Do they have to tie him up, too? It's unnecessary. Uh, for Tanjiro's sake, I hope Butterfly Lady is not the one leading the inquiry. Because if that's the case, she's already decided on death. I mean, just thinking about this outside of anime, seeing the kind of world that they live in, it's gonna be an intense group of people. Like, I feel like it's one thing to have the space to, like, live your life and, like, take on challenges and grow gradually as you reflect on obstacles you hit up against and sort of become realized in that organic manner. And being thrown into, like, carnage and bloodshed and having to adapt on the fly and having all your illusions of safety and peace just shattered. How do you not become just rough, you know, unforgiving, or any variety of things like that? I don't know at all what the Hashir will be like, but they're gonna have edges, if that makes sense, for sure. Very sharp edges. Episode 22, Master of the Mansion. I like the purple leaves. Flame Hashira, Kyojuro Rengoku. <laughs> no need for a trial, just death. I thought Butterfly Lady was a scary one. Sound Hashira, Tengen Uzui. Alright, that's three votes for death. Max Flamboyant, I'm gonna like this guy. Love Hashira, Mitsuri Hanroji. Hey, no death, there we go. One against death. Stone Hashira, Gyomei Himejima. <laughs> so therefore, death? Death. Miss Hashira, Muishiro Tokido. Huh? <laughs> so just to take some early guesses here, I know I will like he who will bring max flamboyance, but that just resonated with, with me very deeply. This guy's head is so far in the clouds, he's literally thinking about clouds. <laughs> There's just advice that gets thrown around about being in the moment. It's one of many things that contains a lot of beauty and wisdom, but is over-applied, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes the moment sucks. <laughs> Sometimes I'd rather be in not the moment, and there are great escapes to be found in clouds, for example. It's a lot you can do with the mind. Let's go. Let's Probably go. in a box, is my guess. Just throwing that out there. Either something's wrong or I'm not good at math. Let's go. Whatever you do, make sure you do it flamboyantly. Is that Gyu? Not this character, I mean Tomioka. That's Gyu, right? He's got to be facing something as well. One of the things I've been wondering about since the last episode is how much of Gyu's decision to go against Butter Butterfly Lady was a factor of just sheer ball size and how much of it was a combination of sheer ball size and being inspired by Tanjiro or in terms unrelated to balls how much has Tanjiro already changed him just from their few encounters I can see that being a thing because I think some of the greatest internal conflict comes from there being dissonance between what your heart is telling you and the actions you're taking for whatever reason and I think just sometimes the act of seeing someone do what you're too afraid to do if it goes well it can sort of open a channel where it becomes motivation just in general I feel like meeting people who do amazing things has a way of like creating a gap up in my mental faculties and abilities or my perceptions of what's possible. Right. Serpent Hashira, Obanai Iguro. Yeah, it was a major sacrifice, but it wasn't just for Tanjiro, right? It had to be something internal for himself as well. She just falls in love with everyone she sees. Whoever she's seen last is adorable and lovable. Yes, we know him. Insect Hashira Shinobu Kocho. Still calling him Boya. Boyo? Boya. Alright, well they're listening. I feel like Tanjiro being kicked out of the Demon Slayers is not really the end of the world. He still has the same mission no matter what. He just loses the support of his crow, I guess, and loses his outfit. I mean, this is an opportunity, right? Like, you can try to explain. 
Don't don't drink anything this girl lady gives you. Ugh. Lots of be truth potion, truth potion or something. I almost said truth poison because that's where my heart is. Yes, the sweet painkiller of death. Okay. All right. <laughs> that's that went a little better than I thought. Maybe I should be a little more trusting. Not so jaded. And she's a kawaii demon who mostly sleeps. Tell her about that too. Right. She just makes cute noises. I mean, it's fair, given their experience. <laughs> I love how... Yeah, sympathy through death. It's the... what do you call it? It's the, the Zeke way. How terrible life is for you. <laughs> like, you must die or not be born. I have deemed your life... Too sad. See, we have a lot of things in common. He also is obsessed with birds. He also has a bad me memory for names. <laughs> it's me. I mean, I get their hesitation. If they let them go and people die as a result of Nezuko, it's on their hands. He has the demon box. <laughs> Wind, Hashira. Sending me... I could not read that fast enough. Honestly, it's amazing that she's lived this long, Nezuko. In this crew. I love it. She's so cute when she's angry. <laughs> yeah. I see a trend. Shinazugawa. I think I got it. <laughs> but it's not death. Maybe it's some kind of test. Right. He knows the hierarchy of his loyalties. It's not to the Demon Slayers. It's to his mission for his family. But this guy also knows that's not death for Nezuko. That felt like a test to me more than anything. If they wanted to kill Nezuko, she'd already be dead. Oh, with no sword and hands tied behind his back, literally. The head. You have felt the power of Tanjiro's skull. <laughs> They're stunned. The way he had him. So cool. So lovely. What do you know about these forged bonds? Oh, not these two again. <laughs> Who is the master? And why are they the master? Huh. Did Nezuko even bother to wake up when she gets stabbed? He looks especially like a Dragon Ball Z character for some reason. Oh, so that wasn't bitterness, it was respect. They got a bow to the master. What kind of person I wonder would be able to command a group like this and have this much loyalty? They really adore him. He knows. Hmm. Very interesting. <laughs> oh! I did not expect him to go against them. Yeah, I understand. I mean, their conviction in this regard is not hard to understand. They spent their whole lives fighting demons who are deadly and have probably lost a lot of friends and had a lot of close encounters with death. It would be like telling a member of the scouts in season one of Attack on Titan that the Titans deserve sympathy. Although I guess Hanji sort of went that route in a, in a way. Also, I feel like while the show hasn't called attention to this, I just feel like in life, if you spend your whole life in dedication to something backed up by a certain idea, it is going to be terrifying to have that idea called into question. So like, for example, if the demon slayers find out that demons can be returned to humans, there are some of them that are going to be destroyed by that information based on the 
justifications they've made so far to get to this point. Of course, it wouldn't really change all that much from like an objective point of view, just because they're fighting creatures that are out to hurt other people. I mean, they could be human for all that matter, and it would still hold up to some degree. But I think a certain kind of person would have a lot of misgivings about that knowledge and would probably resist it on a deeper level than just not trusting the circumstances. That being said, I feel like you can disagree with something vehemently and make that known, but at the same time, give space for yourself to be wrong and not impose circumstances on others' life, especially where it doesn't affect you and where it massively affects other people. You know, skin of the game as a guiding principle, I think is a really important thing. That I think is part of the genius of what they said to Tanjiro early on, where it's like, you bear full responsibility for this. Everything bad that happens because of taking care of Nezuko is on you. Typically though, whether or not this applies to the Hashira, when people lean this heavily on custom or law and are unwilling to consider nuance, typically it's not solely about a logical process or a benevolent line of thinking, but about preserving a framework that in some way or another protects them from either a perceived weakness that they see in themselves or a fear that they don't know how to address otherwise. You see this in life a lot where people, they really are attached to people following rules. And I think in many cases, it's because they gain tremendous satisfaction from thinking about other people following rules. There's some kind of internal peace it gives them or some way in which it alleviates major concerns they have about the chaos of life, which could perhaps be more directly addressed as an individual, you know, like rather than having to impose the will of law or rule or custom or peer pressure on everyone else, one could make oneself feel more capable and more powerful. I think that's a more satisfying and long lasting route. Cat digression. The master just smiles, as do the two creepy twins. Hey, our boy. Long time to see. If Urodaki is vouching for him, <laughs> then that's all we need. The only information we need to hear. Right, I feel like an important link in this is vouching for Tanjiro's character. What? No, they won't. No, they will not. That is not on the table. Now is the time to sort of reflect on the stakes and realize it's not worth it. Just, like, watch her for five minutes. Let's do that first. Then we can kill everyone's stomachs. She's literally sleeping peacefully in the box right behind you. Right, like she attacks humans once, that's all you need, right? I mean, by this logic, like, everyone is on the verge of committing a crime at all times. Like, everyone is about to commit a crime. A terrible crime. Like, there's no human alive that isn't on the verge of doing some terrible evil. Like, we're all a breath away, a hair's breadth away. The people who think they're the farthest away are, in some ways, the closest, because there's a good chance that means they're ignorant of their own darkness, and therefore it will blindside them when they're most vulnerable. So you go down that route of how do you know this person won't do something terrible? We got a minority report this right in the bud and eliminate the chance for anyone we think is a threat to commit a terrible action. I know this is a bit of an exaggeration because she's literally a demon and you would imagine that these people have not had the best experience with demons. So it's sort of easy for me to say, but like literally you could do a little bit, you know, like it would be worth it to examine this. You know, you could do a little bit of research and not be so hasty. I hope it doesn't come across that I'm, I don't like the Hashira so far. Like I'm actually really intrigued by them and I think their position is really understandable. And I I can already tell they're going to be a really interesting cast of characters once we get over this opposition to the main character, main characters, and in some sense the plot progression. Like once we're all on the same page, they're going to be great. That's my instinct about it. It is somewhat Attack on Titan like in its dilemma, right? When Eren first joined the scouts, the Corps. There is one there, <laughs> and that would be that she's a demon. And this far, we have not seen any demons who do not kill people. Which one was Kibutsuchi again? Oh, 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 Michael Jackson is Kibutsuchi. Didn't even have time to battle him. He just finger flicked a pedestrian. Then I met a, a, a lady and her jealous boyfriend and had a fight with balls. A lot has happened. They had a great time. Until they didn't. It's been a journey so far. Yeah, I mean, it's obvious that the audience of Tanjiro's, Tanjiro and Nezuko are worth way more alive. Can you get it in your simple demon killing brains? Right, right. Yeah. I mean, they just have to calcify this hatred, calcify this way of thinking to make themselves move faster and stronger. It's not wrong. This is a garden. 
This actually, at least this is a test. At least this is like a, a progression of thought that isn't just, let's just kill everything. We know she's tempted though. We've seen her drooling over human blood. I feel like she might just be pissed off you woke her from her rest. Her likes her sleep. You're gonna feel differently when you see her kawaii face though. I wonder if Tanjiro feels any fear over this. There's always an unknown element, right? You never know. It's just, just like salivating at the mouth. It's only... It's not like she doesn't have bloodlust. Oh, that's it? I guess this is going to be a trial arc as opposed to a trial episode. And we all know how it's going to turn out, at least the broad strokes. So there's not a whole lot of intrigue or mystery behind the decision. But I think what is exciting about this episode is just firstly the, the introduction of this very colorful cast of characters. I really do feel like once we get this obstacle out of the way, there's a lot of potential. There's a lot of room to grow with this crew of like senpai who are obviously very skilled and also have a huge range of personality or lack thereof, have a lot of experience and are sort of above us we as the main characters in terms of their, well, just everything. Except for heart and goodness, which Tanjiro has a total monopoly on. And another thing to come out of this episode is, speaking of Tanjiro being the greatest, the vision that both Gyu and Tanjiro's teacher have to see that in him and to be willing to give their lives for them. Speaking of skin in the game, they are not at all making the suggestion lightly. It's an unbelievably huge risk for them. And it butterflies. Oh. Yeah, I would be very interested to see more of the Hashira develop as characters, which I'm sure we'll get. All of a sudden, I find myself wondering where Inusuke and Zenitsu are. They're being kept outside of this trial, I guess.